Mm -hmm. Hi everyone. So we are going to be looking at um economic cycle today. We are going to be continuing from where we stopped last week in regards to fundamental analysis. Um so last week we talked about what fundamental analysis was and what we need to do as um, to be able to understand the scope of fundamentals. I'm putting this in a playlist on YouTube um, so that we are all able to so that we are all able to you know just grasp it okay So last week we're here. But this week, this is where we are. We are talking about economic cycle. Um, it's also known as business cycle. So um, this is literally like the, you know, like understanding the phases that the economy goes through. So it could be the U.S. economy, the um Canadian economy, the Nigerian economy, the um Chinese economy, the Japanese economy, um the Australian economy. So whatever economy you are, whatever currency you are trading, um, you know, you should be able to understand the cycle that they are in. Um and this goes on for anything, right? And we have four phases, but first of all, what is the economic cycle? Is the fluctuations in the economy between the expansion and the growth, and then when it goes down. Um, so uh, also when it shows when there is so much activities in the economy and then when there is a decline in the economy. So there are so many factors that affect that economic cycle. So what makes it we are in what 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 makes what should um okay sorry let me share my screen again um Okay. Where is U W R? W L. I'm not sure who's um. Susanna. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Um. So yeah, there are factors that affect it, like your interest rates, your GDP. We are going to talk about all this when we get to the indicator we are treating each indicator individually remember my aim with this uh, fundamental analysis classes is for you to understand each one so that every time you see those news in your forest factory or your my xfx my fx book or anywhere you are able to interpret it um, most times I still carry my notes or I still Google a little thing and I'm like, okay, so this is it. So if this means this, this is what, this is what it translates to. This is how they are going to react. This is how they react and stuff like this. It's basically like technical analysis, like based on this information that they have, they will do this. This is what will happen. You know, everything's all about data. So the changes that represent the different phases, like, you know, those things that affect, those things that the cycle affects, right? Uh, when do we have changes in the cycle? So we are going to talk about them now. So these things, production, investment, employment, credits, um, prices and wages, these are the things that get affected during this cycle. So these are the four phases. You have your expansion. Basically, it can be only two phases, but the the first one, we have expansion and peak, and then you have the contraction and the throw. 
So it's like when something is going good, when the economy is going good and when the economy is going bad. So when the economy is going good, how good is it? If it's really good, then we are getting to the peak period. Then if it is really, really bad, then that's the throw, which is also a phase of recession. So expansion is basically where there is an increase in various economic factors, uh, such as you have your product, there's a lot of production going on, you have employment, um, there's a, people are earning, there, there's profit, and there's a lot of balance in demand, demand and supply. Um, you know, the more people demand, the more they get. People that are producing are selling, there's a lot of sales. Um, so the economy is doing good. It experiences rapid growth, and then at this point, interest rates tend to be low as production increases and then inflationary pressures build. Sorry about sorry about this, guys. Um just what we what we have with this screen sharing thing. Um do with this network. So you still say my connection is not stable. But can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Yeah, sorry, the, the screen is loading. But basically, um, you know, like I was saying, like it needs to inflation is building up because there is a lot of flow of money in the economy. Things are going really, really well. Sorry. Yeah, okay, so um yeah, things are going well. Then you have the peak period. Um this is where the growth there is growth in this expansion phase. And then things begin to slow down and then it reaches the expansion phase begins to slow down and then it reaches its peak. You know, when you keep hitting something, something it, like there is a time where there'll be a boom, right? So it is when this the, the, the peak of a cycle is reached when growth hits its maximum rate, um, just like the name, and then there is a gradual decrease in demand of the various products due to increase in prices of output. So when there is so much demand, you know that the price of that thing will be keep going up. Example is Naira. <laughs> so let me move on to contraction. Contraction is correction that occurs through a period when the growth slows down. So you begin to have a lot of employment falls, that's unemployment, and then prices become stagnant. So when people don't have jobs, they're not able to purchase stuff. Um, I feel like the world has gone through, we've gone through all these stages between 2019 and now. So, um, you know, let me let me just go through this. Generally, producers are unaware of the decrease in demand of products, and then they continue to produce in such a case that supply of goods exceeds the ex exceeds demand. And you know that when we learn supply and demand on the charts, we know that supply is area for sellers, demand is area for buyers, right? When price hits a level of supply. Or a zone of supply, you know that um that's an area for sellers. So these people have enough product, but there is no one to buy it. Uh, so now they now have to reduce the price drastically, which will 
which will affect their their profits and all of those things. So um First of all, this period can be known as like fluctuation in the market. But as time goes on, you begin to see that this is really serious. And then it now moves into the next phase, um, which is like your throw. So the throw is when the economy reaches low and then uh, prices and, and growth begins to recover. So just like on the chart, there is like there is no how price wants to go low to hit a low <laughs> it can't keep going down forever right it, it can do that for a whole month it can do it for a whole week it can do it for a whole day but at some point you will see a reversal and the face of through is where you where we have the where, where, where the economy is at its lowest and what next has what has to come next is the recovery there is no there is no low that is lower than this so the country activities begin to decline below the normal level the growth of the economy begins to become negative and all so if you notice between 2019 let's say 2020 and now We've gone through, we first went through that, um, the throw phase when COVID happened, where everywhere was shut down for two months. And then when everywhere began to, when we be, like everywhere began to open up, um, then the economy started recovering. They needed the economy to recover, which is why we went through the um, recovery phase. So once the economy touches the lowest level, uh, then you start beginning of positivism and this leads to the reversal in the process. So you start to get the economy back into the expansion phase. So that's where you begin to cut interest rates and make sure that uh, people you know, start coming to loan money to do business and so on and so forth, start pumping money into the economy for the economy to recover. So subsequently, you see organizations, they don't lay off their staff, they start hiring more, you begin to see, um, you know, in the, to the economy, you begin to see um, people, postings about job openings and so many things then because the labor market is is it depends on the economy somewhere like the uk and the us they are very heavy on the labor market so they need those jobs those job numbers are very important so you begin to see um even investors investing in that economy uh yeah there is a lot of demand for so many things so uh, and that starts with when the central banks actually cut the interest rates that sends a message across that okay there is money to be grabbed in the economy and all that so then uh consumers begin to increase their rate of consumption uh uh, uh, the phase we are in right now is like a is like we went through we went through through then went into expansion and peak and we are currently I, I believe we are currently in contraction uh because between 2020 and then 2021 there was a level definitely because they cut the interest rate too low, they pumped money, they printed money, they did quantitative easily. So they, they a lot of things happened. And so everybody we went into peak. Then we inflation happened. And what they're trying to do is to get everything back down. So we are definitely in contraction. Um so all of this, what he said, if you have time to go over it again, you can read it. Uh, but it's basically just reemphasizing that um, these are the things that happen in the uh, in the recovery of the economy, right? So this is like price the economy is coming out of recession. 
So I put this here. It like when you let me try and annotate where you have uh you have your p your expansion and then you are you've got into your peak and then we are getting to a contraction and this is like a throw and then recovery back into expansion. You can see this this person and this person they are like doing the same thing. So this is really I uh, this is where everybody is. <laughs> oh, some people are here. Some people are here. So people are here just sitting down and looking. We are everywhere. We are definitely, everybody in the world is definitely here, right? And the next phase is supposed to be recovery. So that's what all the central banks are trying to do before we get here. Remember in 2021, we were here actually, where people were making money left and right after COVID and all that. So it's a cycle. There's no phase that it's just like life. No season is permanent. Okay. So this this is it. Expansion peak, recession or contraction, um, through and then recovery. So the key takeaways in this is that number one, your economic cycle is the overall state of the economy. As it is, uh, as it goes through four stages in a, a cyclical manner. Okay, the four stages are your expansion, peak, recession, or contraction. I go through. Then you can include the recovery there as like the fifth stage. Then the factors that affect it are your gross domestic, uh, your GDP, your interest rates. Uh, the total number of employment, and then you have your uh, consumer spending, all of these things are uh, what affects the cycle, what lets us know what's happening in the cycle. So it can be very useful to uh, business owners and investors. One extra thing I want to, so that's it, but one extra thing I want to um share with you guys is a term. So let me share the whiteboard. And a term used in investing where people say risk on and then risk off. You might have heard it a few times, but if not, um just uh, this is just an investment term or trading term where they say oh the, we are in a risk on the environment or we are in a risk of environment so just going to google straight now and checking what it is risk on and risk off um it means that when investors when investors are risk on they tend to put more money into riskier as the investment such as stocks such as stocks right and then when they are risk off they tend to put into less risky assets just such as bonds so in this and what makes it risky what makes it what makes it not risky is what's happening in the economy the the recent example is the war that is going on between Russia and Ukraine. It's a very uncertain thing. So that that be, that's that's when investors took on a risk off approach and they started pumping money into bonds and leaving stocks because nobody knows how these companies will survive. Right. So and uh, what does that do for your US 30? That makes it go down. Uh, what does it do for gold? It makes it pump up. Um, so the 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 idea is during risk on, they take money out of the less risky ones because the bonds take time before they grow, right? They don't grow as rapidly as your profits in the stock market. So, um, they take money out of out of those places and put it in good in investments in stocks or what whatever the case is and then when things become uncertain like for example you have elections coming 
or you just something is happening in the world like COVID happened or whatever the pandemic <laughs> happened and all you know you begin to remove money you a lot of people remove investment in those areas and then put it in a you know safer option like uh, yeah like what's happening now for example in this nigeria this naira what's happening everything happening with the naira like right now if people had the opportunity to remove all their money and and buy dollars with it if they could get all their naira and buy more dollar right now they would because it seems like we don't know what's happening with the naira there's a lot of uncertainty happening around that so that's a term so any just just know that's what risk on our risk off means okay when invest investment investors put their money into less risky assets or when they put into risky assets so it depends on the economic cycle of that um economy that determines like oh are we in a risk on environment or uh, are we in a risk of um period you know and you know that when it is risk on um then they begin to invest more in stocks and uh, yeah so does that make sense yes yeah okay all right so i i wanted to share the what i told you guys i was going to share about the mistakes and all so like i wasn't able to put it in a slide but let me just show you guys that i started <laughs> so we'll do it next week um and i've only been able to do one you know but but i've started i think i have like seven or ten and i'm not sure yet uh about seven so the first one here is correlation and all that so next week maybe this is what we are going to start with okay so then we now conclude with fundamental analysis because we have about six you know uh, economic indicators so we have a lot to learn with it and we are starting with the what seems like the most difficult one which is like trade balance or balance of trade um with fundamentals but uh if i'm able to do this during the week i'll try to get it done and then get it to you guys on saturday is that okay Thank you. Uh, okay, so do you have any questions before we go? And how has your trading week been in general? Yes, ma, please, I have a question. Um, For the risk on and risk of, does it mean, is there any factor actually that, okay, that determines when to know if there is risk on or is, is it basically based on the on the on the country economy uh, currency or something or is there any specific factor that we can actually be looking at to yeah. consider that yeah yeah that's that's a great question it's it's um i want to go back to the slide hold on Okay, so basically, all these things that affect the economic cycle is what lets us know that we are in the risk on or risk of. So if you have like all these things that I listed here, you have your GDP, right? And then you have your interest rates, the employment of that nation, the consumer spending and all that. It lets you know what like what cycle we are in and if we are in expansion like we said now it means the economy is doing well basically so definitely investors will be risk on do you understand but when we are in recession mm -hmm. or contraction it means that the growth slows down and employment begins to fall 
prices begin to stagnate, it now begins to, uh, uh, investors now begin to have a risk of, do you understand? So when some when economy is doing mm -hmm. well, when thing when something is going well, you want to invest in that economy. You want to do so many things. You are free to do so many things. But when you begin to sense that oh the growth is declining, then there is a risk of sentiment. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So so crypto for example in 2021 you know we had a lot of interest new people everybody was screaming shouting like you know i was excited i made a couple of new crypto investments here and then you make like people were investing in crypto companies are coming out of crypto but right now right now you can see that everybody has gone quiet why because the economy in the cryptocurrency market is currently going through contraction definitely it won't throw do you understand would you would you be willing to put in a lot of money in crypto right now even though the correct thing is to buy low right or you won't be comfortable mm -hmm. because it's not doing great. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So right now, crypto traders are risk off because they rather put their money into something else. And what happened is people put money into dollar, into USD then because it was it was going up because of the interest rate hike, right? So now when it looks like crypto is doing well, probably when we hit 48k, you now start seeing a lot of risk on they are willing to invest in that area. So basically that's just what it means. Uh, and it can really affect your your day trading. You just need to know because um you know, you're dealing with certain economies. Do you understand? So you just need to know if you're doing something like US 30, you know what's going on, gold, all of those things. Remember when the war happened, gold shot up. It almost went to, like, it got to $2,000 and all that. So, you know, all of those, that's what was happening. All right, so we're already we extended on I don't I don't want this class to be like 30 minutes or so. So um you guys have a great trading week and hope um you're having a good start to trading this year. And the market is not going crazy on you. It's going okay. Thank you. Okay, great. All right. So see you guys next week and have a peep full week. Okay. So take care. Okay. Take care. Right. Thank, Thank you. you.